Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture series of electromagnetic fields. We will discuss different theories, phenomena and numerical solution of different cases in this series. I hope this series will give a fruitful outcome to physics scholars or engineering students. In last video we have discussed the Cartesian coordinate system. Press the i button to know more about Cartesian coordinate system. Today we are going to learn about cylindrical coordinate system. So let us begin. The cylindrical coordinate system is the three dimensional version of polar coordinate system. Now we know that uh, we can show any point say for example we need to show a point 2 2 then we will travel 2 units in x direction and 2 units in y direction and here we will have the point 2 2 if we want to represent any complex plane then x axis will be a real axis and y axis will be imaginary axis we generally use the symbols sigma for real axis and j omega for imaginary axis fine so in such complex plane this point say for example point a can be written as its real part is 2 plus its imaginary part is also plus 2 so j 2 fine so and another way to represent the same point A is to represent it in terms of magnitude and some angle. So we can find the magnitude of this line. So simply if we apply Pythagoras theorem, the base has the length 2 unit and the height of triangle is also 2 unit. So it will be under root 8. So the magnitude from the origin to point A is under root 8. And angle as you can see its uh, base and height both are 2. So angle will be 45 degree. So we, we have two ways of representing a point in a complex plane. Either you represent the point A by real part plus J into imaginary part or you can also represent the point with the help of magnitude and angle. Now this representation is called the rectangular form and this representation is called the polar form. So the very first line of today's lecture represents that cylindrical coordinate system is the three dimensional version of polar coordinate system. We will understand this once we uh, go through all the concept of this lecture. The surfaces used to define the cylindrical coordinate system are first one a cylinder of radius r or rho with z axis as the axis of cylinder, a half plane perpendicular to xy plane with one side lies on z axis and third plane is a plane of constant z which is parallel to xy plane so let us recap whatever we have seen in the cartesian uh, coordinate system so we had three planes and all of three planes have the shape of rectangle so first this red plane it will be will always be parallel to yz plane and it will free to move from negative infinity to plus infinity on the x-axis. This second plane over here, the blue one, is, will always be parallel to xz plane and it will be free to move from negative infinity to positive infinity on y-axis. And this third plane that will always be parallel to xy plane and it will be free to move from negative infinity to positive infinity on z axis and the intersection of these three planes defines a point in a three dimensional cartesian coordinate system so 
for any cartesian coordinate system there is there are two fundamental rules the first rule is we must need three different surfaces and the second rule is the base vectors will always make a 90 degree angle among each other fine so all the base vectors will be mutually perpendicular so here as you can see the direction of this plane will be either ax bar or either negative ax bar for this plane the direction will be either ay bar or negative ay bar and for this plane the direction will be either az bar or negative az bar so at any point in the plane the direction of these three surfaces will always be mutually perpendicular and that is why cartesian coordinate system is defined fine so for cylindrical coordinate system as we have seen the first surface is a cylinder with radius r and the axis of the cylinder will always lie on the z axis that means this dotted line shows the axis of cylinder and the radius of this cylinder is r now this cylinder is virtually having the infinite length or here we can say infinite height and it is also having a capa uh, capability to shrink up to zero radius or to expand up to infinite radius so so that it can cover each and every point in the three dimensional space so as you can see the cylinder has the capability to shrink and expand so our first surface the cylinder of radius r with z axis as the axis of cylinder and it is free to extract or contract contract to infinity direction of this plane will always be the same as the direction of radius fine so for any point the direction of radius will be the direction of this plane here the range of radius will be 0 to plus infinity fine it it can shrink to 0 it can expand up to infinity the second surface for our uh, cylindrical coordinate system is a half plane which are which is perpendicular to xy plane and one side of this plane always lay laid on z axis so as you can see this is a black half plane which I, which i have shown and uh, theoretically it is ex expandable up to infinite fine so it will always be parallel to xy plane and it is free to revolve around z axis fine its one edge will always lay on z axis and it is free to revolve around z axis so here the second parameter of consideration is the angle that it makes with z x uh, sorry x axis fine so this angle is called phi fine so whatever angle this plane uh, is making with x axis will be the value of phi and direction of this plane will always be the same as the direction of its rotation fine so we will consider the incremental angle direction for this plane now if this plane want to cover all the points uh, of the space then it must start revolve from phi equal to 0 degree to phi equal to 360 degree in terms of radian it becomes 0 radian to 2 pi radian so by revolving 0 to 2 pi radian it will cover all the space uh, all the points of the space so this half plane will be the uh, second surface for the cylindrical coordinate system our third surface is the same as we have shown in cartesian coordinate system that we have a infinite plane which is always parallel to xy plane and free to rotate uh, free to move from negative infinity to plus infinity on the z axis the direction of this plane will be either plus az bar if it is above the xy plane or minus az bar if it is below the xy plane but the range of z for this 
plane will be minus infinity to plus infinity fine and the intersection of these three uh, planes will help us to locate a point in a cylindrical coordinate system i have shown uh, cartesian axis in each and every uh, coordinate system because this is the reference for our understanding fine moving further how to represent a point in a cylindrical coordinate system so a point can be represented at the intersection of these three mutually perpendicular surfaces so which three surfaces first surface was cylinder second was a half plane and third was a infinite plane fine the coordinates of cylindrical uh, system are r phi z we know the coordinates in cartesian system is x y and z fine here in cylindrical uh, system any point will have the coordinates as r comma phi comma z so where r is a cylindrical surface with radius r phi is an azimuth angle of the half plane with respect to x axis azimuth stands for uh, what angle uh, it is uh, forming horizontally with the x axis and z is the height or z coordinate of the plane parallel to xy now intersection of any two surfaces will be a line or a circle but the intersection of all three surfaces defines a point i will show you how uh, the intersections of different surfaces will look like so here i have mentioned a point p x y z first i have uh, indicated indicated it in a cartesian coordinate system so that you can have a clear understanding about the position of point fine so this point is having uh, x value sorry x value y value and z value fine the same point p x y z can also be represented in cylindrical coordinate system and it is very easy to represent with the help of three surfaces that we have discussed now we know how to represent any point in cartesian coordinate system the same point p can also be represented in cylindrical coordinate system as p r phi z so now we will turn the same point p x y z into p r phi z so first i am imaging a cylinder having radius r i have uh, represented uh, the extra notations on left hand side because the main thing of understanding will be on the right hand side of, of our x y z plane so i have imagined a cylinder with radius r and a half plane having its one side on the z axis making some angle phi with x axis now the intersection of these two surfaces will give us a straight vertical line as you can see if this half plane cuts the cylinder then the intersection will be a flat vertical line fine and third surface is again a plane which is parallel to xy plane at the height z from the origin fine now the intersection of this red plane and black plane will give us a line originating from the any point on z axis parallel to xy plane and making the same angle phi with x axis because this direction is x bar the same angle phi it will form with the x axis and the intersection of this white cylinder and red plane will be a circle i hope you can imagine this thing that which two surface will make which type of intersection fine so a cylinder and a xy plane will give us the circular intersection a half plane and a xy plane will give us a line as an intersection which will be 
perpendicular to xy plane and uh, intersection between uh, half plane and cylinder will be a, a vertical line so in this way we can arrange our surfaces of cylindrical coordinate system now representing the same in a proper and accurate manner first we will remove our markings these markings are only for your understanding so we will have a circular intersection so it is the intersection between red and white surfaces we will have a uh, inclined line which is uh, originated at z axis and terminated into infinite and making angle phi with the x axis and the third intersection is our vertical line so the intersection of all three surfaces will define a point over here so as you can see this circle this inclined line and this vertical line intersects at a particular point and this point is nothing but p r phi z which was initially p x y z in the cartesian coordinate system so the direction so as we know that for the for the cylinder having the radius r the direction of radius will be the direction of r axis so here the direction of radius is like this one so it will be in same direction this ar will always be parallel to xy plane fine the direction of phi will be it will be a tangent to this uh, circular intersection at point p and the direction will be the incremental direction of phi here we know that at if the plane lies like this then the angle will be zero and phi is increasing from positive x to positive y or say anti clockwise fine so incremental direction of angle will be the direction of phi coordinate and the direction of this plane as it is above xy plane the direction of this red surface will be plus az bar now this a phi bar and ar bar will always be parallel to xy plane and you can also see that here radius the direction of radius and a phi is the direction of tangent so it will make 90 degree angle between them now this az is on the vertical direction while ar and a phi both are parallel to xy plane so az will make 90 degree angle with a phi as well as with ar fine so here we can see that all three axes or base vectors are making 90 degree among them so we can establish this system as standard coordinate system and as one of the surface is having a cylindrical shape it is named as cylindrical coordinate system now let us talk about base vectors of this cylindrical system so similar to cartesian system there are three unit vectors in the direction of r phi and z these are mutually perpendicular to each other which i have already shown you so as you can see in the figure that ar a phi bar and az bar all three unit vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other so that ar bar lies in a plane parallel to xy plane and it is perpendicular to the surfaces of cylinder at a given point coming radially outward a phi bar also lies in a plane parallel to xy plane but it is tangent to the cylinder at a given point so either you consider the tangent at the cylinder or tangent in the circular intersection the direction will be the same for a phi bar and az bar is parallel to z axis and directed towards increasing z fine if it is below xy plane then its direction will uh, would be 
minus az bar but here in this case it is above xy plane that is why we have taken the positive direction of z axis fine so in short cylindrical coordinate system has three base vectors ar bar a5 bar and az bar and these three unit vectors are mutually perpendicular hence they are called base vectors of the system now with the help of base vector we can represent the point p in a vector form say this is the position vector of point p fine so in a vector form point p can be represented as the value of r that is pr direction ar bar plus value of phi that is the angle which uh, this half plane make is making with x axis so it is nothing but p phi or phi coordinate of point p with a direction a phi bar plus p z which is the height above which this infinite plane is lying or the z coordinate of the point which is nothing but p z and the, with the direction a z bar in cartesian coordinate system the base vectors are not dependent on the value of coordinates but in cylindrical coordinate system the r direction and phi direction are the function of phi coordinate as their direction changes with the value of phi see what happened in the cartesian coordinate system whatever be the value of px py or pz the direction of x y and z axis will remain same but it is not the case in the cylindrical system fine because as the angle changes the direction of ar say we have <coughs> some smaller angle or here so the point of interest will shift quite outwards now this will be some another point p1 with r phi1 z fine and the angle let us say it is making angle of phi1 over here fine so now for this point the direction of ar will be like this direction of a5 will be like this and az will be this the z direction will not uh, face any change with the changing of this angle but the direction of r and phi as you can see have changed fine so here r direction and phi direction are the function of the angle fine and hence in integration and differentiation with respect to phi components in r direction and phi direction should not be treated as constant you will have more clear idea once we solve some numericals on this system fine but it is easy to recognize that if we change the value of angle then r direction and phi direction will also change then relation between cartesian and coordinate uh, sorry cylindrical coordinate system so i have shown a cartesian coordinate system i have deliberately uh, cut the negative x direction now consider a point <coughs> with x y z coordinates in cartesian system and the same point is having r phi z coordinates in cylindrical system so this point in cartesian system is having coordinate as x y z so you can Uh, take projection of p on x y plane first then the height of point p from the x y plane will be the z coordinate of point and whatever point we are getting as a projection on x y plane you take one projection on y axis and one projection on x axis then you will have the magnitudes of x and y coordinates so parallel to x axis we have x magnitude and parallel to y axis we have y magnitude now the same point can be represented by p r phi z 
so uh, i have not shown the full cylinder but only a portion of cylinder uh, with radius r then a plane making some angle phi with x axis and finally i have not shown the plane but you can imagine a plane at the z height and parallel to xy okay so in cylindrical uh, coordinates i have shown in yellow colors and the cartesian coordinates we have, i have shown in white colors so now this point can also be referred as p r phi z in cylindrical system now if i want to establish a relationship between cartesian and cylindrical system then i must derive some formula from which i can calculate different coordinates in different systems fine so for that the first relation is very obvious because as we can see the z over here in the cartesian coordinate system is having the same height in the cylindrical coordinate system because in both the cases that plane which is parallel to xy plane is the same so for cylinder and cartesian uh, cartesian coordinate system the z parameter will always be same so z will be equal to z so here it will be cartesian parameters and here will be cylindrical parameters okay now if you are if we want to establish a relationship of r phi and z with x and y what have we taken uh, done we have taken a projection of r vector on x y plane so that we can have the better understanding of angles now the projection of r vector will also make the same angle phi with x axis and we know that uh, geometrically if we have a vector r originating from origin and making an angle phi with respect to x axis then its its x component will be r cos phi and y component will be r sin phi so here for cartesian system x will be r cos phi and y will be r sin phi so now this is the conversion from non cartesian coordinates to unknown cylindrical coordinates fine but if we want to go inversely that we have to find r phi and z from given x y z then how can we do it here you can see the r or radius is on the is making a right angle triangle like this one now this is the nothing but x this as you can see y fine now applying pythagoras theorem we have the magnitude of radius equals to base square plus height square and square root of this addition okay so r can be defined or can be calculated with non x and y with x square plus y square for calculating phi we again have the uh, same geometrical formula so we can define a tan phi function now tan phi is nothing but opposite side divided by neighboring side so y by x because here phi is over here the opposite side is having the length y and neighboring side is having length x so again keeping phi as the subject our formula will be modified to tan inverse y by x and this is how we can calculate phi fine one can define any function say tan phi sin phi cos phi anything fine but we can easily calculate the phi coordinate of point with non x y and 
z coordinates so if cartesian coordinate of any point is known then we can easily calculate its cylindrical coordinates and vice versa so here is a table which will show you how uh, cartesian uh, coordinates can be calculated from known cylindrical coordinates and how cylindrical coordinates can be calculated from known cartesian coordinates fine so these formulas are very helpful when you are you are we are uh, solving some examples now here is an activity so we need to locate points p 225 degree and 3 another point is q 445 degree and 5 fine so i will locate one point for you and another point i am leaving up leaving it up to you fine so first first coordinate is nothing but r second coordinate is nothing but phi and third coordinate is nothing but z so we need to represent the point p in the cylindrical coordinate system but for the reference i have taken x y and z axis F fine so r we know that the radius of cylinder will be 2 so first we will draw a cylinder with radius 2 so i will use dotted line because here the cylinder is not the surface of our interest fine here our interest is to represent a point p so here i have drawn a cylinder with infinite height with radius 2 fine so as you can see the radius i have chosen is 2 units now the value of phi which is given as 25 degree now we know that the angle between x and y axis is 90 degree fine so here it will be 45 degree somewhere over here and again bisecting that then we will have 25 degree somewhere over here so our plane must be laid like this and as we can imagine that this angle is 25 degree and now finally the z coordinate is given as 3 so we will simply move 3 units in positive z direction fine and we will have intersections of our surfaces like this so this intersection of all three surfaces will give us an idea about point p represented as 2 comma 25 degree comma 3 and joining this point p with origin will give us the vector representation of the point in vector representation we can represent the vector p bar as 2 ar bar plus 25 degree it is common practice to uh, convert this degree into radian fine so that in multiplication and division we can operate the value of angle with numerical values a5 bar plus 3 az bar okay so this is how we can represent any point in the cylindrical coordinate system with known r phi and z coordinates now this point q 4 comma 45 degree comma 5 i am 
giving you a chance to represent the same moving further now we will discuss the differential elements in cylindrical coordinate system so uh, from the previous videos uh, you are now very much aware about the importance of differential elements that for any kind of coordinate system to be well understood we must understand its differential elements that is differential length differential surfaces and differential volume fine so we will develop a differential element in cylindrical coordinate system so first i have taken a point fine now this point let us say it is some point p with coordinates r phi z fine now you can see a cylinder over here a surface making phi angle with this and a surface which is at z height okay an intersection of these three surface defines a point over here fine so and now let each coordinate of point p increase by a small differential amount say dr d phi and dz in the respective directions fine so we have some increment as you can see the angle is increased by d phi value the height is increased by dz value and radius is now increased by dr value so another point can be represented and if we join these two point then we will have a semi cut pi type shape which is the differential element in cylindrical coordinate system and we can define the edges by because this point is having the, uh, the radius r this point is having radius r plus dr so this difference will be dr same way this point is having height z this point is having height z plus dz so this vertical length of our element will be dz now this point is making an angle phi with respect to x axis while this point is making angle phi plus d phi with x axis so the angular difference between these two points will be d phi fine so differential length can be represented by p bar that uh, sorry the position vector of p bar can be represented as p bar equals to r ar bar plus phi az bar plus z az bar that is the initial coordinates of point and by increasing its uh, coordinates by differential amounts the position vector of p prime here this point is p and this point is p prime will be r plus dr ar bar phi plus d phi a phi bar and z plus d dz a z bar we have increased the differential amount in the respective direction okay so differential length consider a point p r phi z and increase its each coordinate by differential amount doing so we get a point p prime shifted from p having new coordinates as p prime r phi r plus dr comma phi plus d phi comma z plus dz so here this vector is differential length of our element this point is again p r phi z and this point is p prime r plus dr phi plus d phi z plus dz now the length of differential vector dl bar will be p prime bar minus p bar so dr ar bar plus r d phi a phi bar plus dz az bar now as you can see if you want to travel from p to p prime then first we will need to move dr unit in the direction of r then we will need to move this length in the direction of phi now 
we have we only have the angle over here fine but for the length of differential element we need to calculate the length of this arc fine and length of this arc is nothing but radius multiplied by angle length of arc is nothing but radius multiplied by angle so radius over here is r and it is multiplied by the angle which is d phi okay and from this point we will move dz amount in the direction of z and finally we will reach to point p prime fine and the magnitude of the differential vector which is also called the length of differential vector is dl bar modulus equals to under root dr square that is r coordinate square plus r d phi square plus dz square fine so here dr equals to differential length in r direction r d phi is the differential length in phi direction and dz is differential length in z direction okay so we need to understand the differential length in all three base vectors direction as well as how to calculate the magnitude of the same now differential surfaces so point p is a intersection of three planes while p prime is the intersection of intersection point of three other planes which are slightly displaced from prior planes now these six planes are called differential surfaces so as you can see we are having six planes the first plane is the curved plane or we can say inner curved plane this is first plane the secondly we have outer curved plane this is our second surface we have a front square or front rectangular surface so this is our third surface same way we have a back rectangular surface that is our fourth surface and we are also having a top surface which is also curved and a bottom surface which is also curved now among these six surfaces we have two sets of two surfaces which are which are having equal uh, magnitude of surface area say top and bottom surface both are having r d phi length and dr width fine so both top and bottom surface will have the same magnitude of surface area same way front and back surface both is both are having dr length and dz height fine so the surface area of front and back surface will be same fine but the surface area of inner curved and outer curved surface will not be same differential surface in general uh, can be represented as ds bar is equals to ds which is the magnitude of uh, the area and a n bar which is a unit vector normal to the surface so now let us understand the differential surfaces separately as we have done in cartesian system so i have uh, taken two sets of x y and z planes and i will divide uh, total six surfaces into the group of three so first is inner curved surface and outer curved surface you can imagine that i have kept this surface and replicate it over here i have kept this surface and replicate over here fine so you can see the length of this curve is r d phi and height of this surface is dz same way for the outer curved surface the length of this arc will now be r plus dr into d phi because here the radius has been increased by an amount dr 
okay so r plus dr d phi but the height of this surface will be same as the inner curved that is dz fine second two sur uh, another two surfaces are front flat surface and back flat surface so i am removing this so front flat surface as you can see over here this is our front flat surface and this is our back flat surface both are identical but the direction of phi will be different for uh, uh, these two surfaces fine it is having a height dz and length as dr similarly for the back, uh, back flat surface the height is dz and the length is dr fine so magnitude of both these surfaces will be same only the direction will be different F why it, it will be different because front surface is making angle phi with x axis while back flat surface is making angle phi plus d phi with x axis and that is why the direction will be different and last two surfaces are nothing but top surface and bottom surface so this is our top surface and this is our bottom surface of differential element fine so as you can see the surface area for both the surfaces will be same because the length of this arc will be r d phi and the expansion in the r direction is dr fine so top and bottom surface both will have the same cross sectional area actually uh, this outer curvature will have r plus dr into d phi length but whenever we are calculating anything like this then we will consider the mean curvature of the surface fine and this mean curvature will be 2r plus dr whole divided by 2 d phi fine so this is just for your information that uh, at the time of calculation we will consider the mean curvature fine otherwise the representation is good now talking about the direction and uh, the formulas to find the differential surface so for inner curved surface as you can see it will be in the direction of r and can be defined as ds r bar equals to r d phi see this length is r d phi and this length is dz so multiplication of both the lengths will give you the magnitude and the direction is the direction of radius fine for outer curved surface we have the length of these two sides that is height and curved arc is r plus dr into d phi multiplied by dz so this term or this multiplication will give you the magnitude of this outer curved surface and the direction of this surface will be again in the direction of r or say radius same way for the back flat surface and front flat surface we can show ds phi plus d phi bar fine because back flat surface is making an angle phi plus d phi with x axis fine so these two surfaces will have the same magnitude but the direction will be different because back flat surface will have the direction a phi plus d phi bar while front flat surface will have the direction a phi bar now top and bottom surfaces so we can show if the top surface is having the direction a z bar and bottom surface is having a direction negative a z bar the magnitude of both the surfaces are same that is r dr d phi here r dr d phi is the magnitude minus stands for negative direction of z fine so 
this is how we can understand six different surfaces for the differential element in cylindrical coordinate system and last differential volume so i have enlarged this differential element in cylindrical system so point p is the intersection of three planes while p prime is the intersection of three other planes which are slightly displaced from prior three and these six planes together define a volume fine uh, eventually the shape of this volume if you want to uh, uh, imagine that then imagine a good cake or pie then put two cut on different angles and then put a curved cut at some particular radius and whatever piece you can grab from the outer side will be the shape of differential element in cylindrical coordinate system and you will grab a piece having shape somewhat like this fine so this will be the shape of differential element fine to be exact now in order to find the differential volume the formula for the same is again the height into length into width so this volume is having height dz it is having length dr and it is having width as r d phi fine so multiplying all these uh, differential lengths so dr multiplied by r d phi into height which is dz so r dr d phi dz is the formula to find the differential volume of the element thank you